In this segment of the lab tour, Daniel will present a list of selected instruments that are critical for maintaining an active cell line. He will provide a visual demonstration of how he routinely uses this equipment to culture the living cells and to use them for some of our imaging experiments. Cell culture is a complicated process and often required a few key instruments. In this slide, uh, there are two key instruments uh, displayed. First being the biosafety cabinet, or called a laminar flow hood, that keeps the cell clean. The second is a cell culture incubator. Two of these uh, equipment are necessary to ensure that cells are cultured regularly in a sterile environment. On top of the two equipments, um, there are other uh, types of equipment in the lab that Dana will demonstrate that includes a refrigerator, a centrifuge, and inverted microscope. Throughout the demonstration, please be aware of the concepts that Dana will present that includes the primary purpose of each of these instruments, instrument design and operation, and how each instrument are used for culturing living cells. cell culture lab. So here in the cell culture lab, we culture cells outside of their host species such that we can evaluate um, their cell behavior. And in this lab, what we, we culture cells so that we can validate various microscopes uh, or microscope modalities that we built. So here we use cell culture to, in order to in order to sustain cell culture, we need to keep the cells happy. And in order to do this, we require various instruments to sustain uh, a cell culture environment that is controlled. So here we have an incubator, CO2 incubator. And basically, this CO2 incubator heats the cells at 37 degrees, which is the body, uh, general body temperature. And it consists also of uh, control of carbon dioxide, and that is to control the pH within the cell culture itself, so that it's not too acidic or too alkaline. We have here a fridge and freezer, and this is to store all the components required for cell culture. We have right behind me uh, a laminar flow cabinet, a biosafety cabinet. This is important because in cell culture, we need the cells to be sterile. And for any techniques we perform, we perform in the biosafety cabinet where everything inside is, that is brought inside or performed inside is sterile. Next, we have a water bath incubator. And this is to heat up all the components for cell culture to 37 degrees so that such that the cells do not experience variations in temperature. We have here pipettes, which, such, which allows us to aspirate um, cell culture components and to transfer cell culture components. We have a microscope, a satellite microscope, and this is important so that we can uh, visualize the cells and to ensure that the cells are healthy. And finally, we have centrifuges, which we use to concentrate the cells should we need to. So this is a generic uh, CO2 incubator where we keep the cells under culture. And as you can see, it's a heavily um, controlled environment where we control the temperature, in this case 37 degrees, and also the carbon dioxide levels, which is in this case set to 10%. Now, because the cells need to be kept happy, uh, the environment within it is well maintained. As you can see, there's actually two layers to prevent any loss of heat. There's condensation on the window panel, and that's because within, it's not the third parameters that it needs to be humidified. And this is to ensure that the cell culture media within it does not evaporate. So how this is possible is basically, at the bottom, we have a, a water bath tray. And that keeps the interior humidified. Now, if I open this, close this again, 
So this uh, cell calls a blast where there's currently live uh, fibroblast cells within. And we try to keep the fibroblast in 37 degrees as much as possible such that we don't affect their growth. But what you can see here, the moment I open this chamber, the carbon dioxide levels have, and also the temperature has begun to drop quite, back, quite rapidly. And this highlights the importance of ensuring that both window and that is closed and that we have a dual chamber system or a double insulation. So this is the fridge and freezer, which is required for all cell culture labs. And this is where we store all our reagents and media for cell culture. So what you see here is basically all the reagents we uh, keep for short term. And one of the core reagents we use is cell culture media. And this is where we keep the cells uh, under in the CO2 incubator and it consists, it consists of all the nutrients required for cell growth. The freezer is used to store various components that are required um, for cell culture. For instance, we have aliquots of fetal bovine serum, and what this has are all the growth factors um, required for cells to uh, replicate. So when you perform cell culture, you need the cells to be under a sterile environment so that they're not contaminated by bacteria and viruses. So how we achieve that is through a biological safety cabinet. How this works is basically the cabinet pushes air by a laminar airflow, which is it pushes air from the top to the center and outwards to the sides, into the grills at the back and the front, as you can see. This air is then funneled back through, um, the, through towards the top again and filtered through a HEPA filter to remove any viruses and bacteria. Now to the demonstrate this, I'll use this tissue paper and I'll place it right at the front grill. As you can see, it immediately sticks onto the grill due to the suction of air from the outside into the grill. So these are the small instruments that are required for cell culture. And this includes the centrifuge, see here. And what we use the centrifuge for is, as I mentioned to, um, spin down cells. So for this, we insert the cells into the centrifuge tubes and we place them into the centrifuge and then start the centrifuge at a low speed. And what this does is it applies a g-force onto um, the tubes such that any large particulates, including the cells, are pelleted to the bottom. Here we have um, a standard light microscope and it's important to visualize the cells. And finally, we have a water bath incubator, which is set at 37 degrees Celsius, which we have basically when we're like, just before we start cell culture, we insert any reagents and cell culture media um, 30 minutes beforehand to warm them up, such that when we passage the cells, they are kept at 37 degrees so the biosafety cabinet provides a sterile environment and therefore anything that we bring in and out of the cabinet needs to be sterile. Therefore the first step is before starting is to sterilize the workbench itself and for this we just spray ethanol onto the surface and wipe it down. Now we can assume that the surface is sterile. Anything that we bring in to the cabinet, such as, for instance, the pet, will have to be wiped clean with ethanol first. So here are all the reagents required to, to split cells. So what I have in here is bleach, where I can discard of any waste, 
trypsin, which is required to detach the cells from the surface. PBS, or phosphate buffered saline, which is used to wash the cells. The cells themselves, as you can see in the flask. A pipette gun and stripettes, which are used to aspirate and dispense of any liquids. So the first step is basically to clear out any of the waste media in here, to wash the cells, and then to add trypsin to detach the cells. So what I'll do here is first remove the stripette. As you can see, I'm making sure I do not touch the pipette with my own hands, to which can be a source of contamination. contamination. So now I'll aspirate out the media and place it in the bleach waste. I avoid any air bubbles to, pre to prevent aerosolizing uh, the bleach itself or any of the waste products. The next step is to wash the cells. So here I just need two mils of PBS. So now I'll wash the cells with PBS and I tilt it on the side so that I don't disturb the cells. I give it a slight rinse and this basically detaches any dead cells that are stuck to the bottom and any remaining media. Finally, I'll add trypsin to detach the cells. So I try not to move too much, but I also try to, to move fast. And this is because we like to keep the cells out of its normal uh, temperature as little as possible. So now I'll add trypsin. And then I will incubate the cells at 37 degrees for roughly. So now I'll keep the cells. So before starting any cellular experiments, first it's important to check the health of the cells. And for this, use the standard light microscope. So this is an inverted light microscope, which allows us to place a sample as the objective is at the bottom, allowing us to view samples or adherent cells that are at the, surf, at the basal surface of this flask. So this works by channeling light, which is produced by a halogen lamp, which is then illuminated through the sample and through the objective, which you can view through a binocular 